Hi, I'm Peter Shinkoda. I'm a lowly actor. You might know me from uh, Marvel's Daredevil on Netflix, and uh, this is my life story. It was nice. It's one of the greatest places. In fact, I think, hands down, inarguably, it is uh, the freest and, uh, you know, the, the most civilized place to live in the world. Got great social programs. Um, people are nice. Uh, yeah. I highly recommend Canada. Visit there. The three major cities in Canada are Toronto, Montreal, uh, and uh, Vancouver, in order of population. Montreal, uh, in my humble opinion, being the best city, most cultured city. It also happens to be the, uh, the coldest of the three, if not of all major cities in Canada. Uh, so I grew up there uh, in the cold and uh, needless to say, it's, you know, it's, it's on the east coast of Canada, so it's not really, it doesn't really favor a lot of um, Asian immigrants. So uh, I was pretty much isolated as the only Asian guy around. Um, I had a lot of friends, very uh, diversified my friend group you know I had Armenian friends East Indian friends Italian Greek uh, black friends um, so you know uh, I, I was often the token Asian uh, you know hanging around uh, growing up yeah so th there wasn't that many I didn't have uh, there's not much of an Asian community in, in Quebec uh, uh, nor Montreal the city itself so um, but I think it uh, it serviced me in many ways it, it, it helped uh, develop my uh, you know well, certainly, I, I feel that I'm very well-rounded, and I have, uh, you know, a great respect for all kinds of cultures and uh, races and nationalities. Most of the discrimination uh, that you know I sense going on around me is, uh, you know, it's 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 common. It's it's it's, it's daily occurrence, but it's very subtle. Um, I think people, uh, visual minorities, can uh, easily develop, you know, a sense for that. They can recognize it. Uh, certainly, I can. Um, as an actor, I'm always keenly observing people's behavior. But, uh, you know, it doesn't really mess with me, uh, in fact, uh, empowers me. But it, it's, it's around, uh, institutionalized racism, it's around, and, and it's, you know, it's hanging strong. But uh, there's progress being made, and, uh, you know, I chose this, this, this line of work to somehow maybe uh, curb, curb that, that racism. It's revealed a lot of, to me about my own self as a kid, um, I started to look at the, you know, the specific titles that I had uh, in music and especially in comics and I noticed that, you know, in, in my whole collection there was a big, uh, was a, a big chunk of them, a big the majority of them were all the Asian offerings of DC and Marvel. Uh, I noticed that I had like, you know, uh, Shogun Warriors, I had Godzilla, I had um, many, um, you know, Master Kung Fu's. Uh, so I, I think that uh, when there was an opportunity to escape into uh, these, these um, comic books, I, I did take that chance. Again, I, I didn't do it consciously. I just gravitated towards them because you know there was uh, there was a semblance in, in, in uh, um, you know the, the aesthetic yeah. of the person on title. Like, and Shang Chi is like he's a, he was a big superhero. Um, I guess in uh, in my mind, I, I equated him perhaps to Bruce Lee or myself. You know, so I read those. You know, adamantly. I think it's that common thread that draws everybody uh, to to you know fantasize, dream about acting. Um, that uh, you know the escapism, and then once that kicked in, and I, I you know I just became such a, a big fan of film and TV. Uh, then I, I started to realize there was a, uh, not only a, a negligence towards um, Asian uh, talent or characters. I, I, I thought that it was misrepresentative. Um, as I uh, got into my, my teens, uh, a childhood friend of mine, Corey Haim, actually, you know, he had uh, quite a substantial career in his teens, and I, I thought that it was easily, you know, accessible after having uh, witnessed what happened to him. It was tangible. You can reach that goal, because he went to high school with me in Montreal, and then one day he disappeared, and uh, he went off to do uh, Silver Bullet, License to Drive, those kind of movies, and uh, then it, it occurred to me that it was uh, it was a very um, you know you you can you can achieve it um, with or without your parents' help. Uh, you can get there, and you know it's it's real people in front of the camera. With that realization, uh, it set uh, you know the wheels into motion, and uh, I started to pursue acting. 
Um, and most of it was because I felt that uh, you know maybe I'd be. I, I, I thought I was. I was. I convinced. I was convinced that I, I could perhaps be that candidate that, that could maybe um, you know uh, offer something, or perhaps be uh, you know ha have the, the goods to to land a role. And uh, you know I made the, my way over to Hollywood. First time when I was 17, uh, and I permanently moved here when I was 22. And uh, you know things have worked out, fortunately. Big break. Well, like, you know, I've been acting on and off for over 20 years. But my biggest break came you know, six years ago. You know, I was uh, relegated to small supporting roles, one-liner, day, day players, at most uh, guest star roles, until uh, six years ago when when I was cast as a regular on. Uh, TNT show Falling Skies from Steven Spielberg and that was it that was my first regular role so I think that was my my break in a sense that it, it gave me a lot of exposure and uh, opened up a lot of doors and opportunities and, and gave uh, people uh, the confidence to to hire me in other roles you know it really um, just blew the doors wide open so I, I would consider that one my big break you know. it's not much more to explain uh, getting typecast sucks um, I don't care uh, who you are, um, but then again, you're getting cast, as, uh, as Michael Caine put it. Typecast whatever, you're getting cast. Um, but in the, in the Asian male's particular case, you know, it's, it's really undermining for, the, for, for us as Asian males ourselves. I mean, it's personally insulting seeing, uh, you know, the, the way that uh, they roll out Asian characters as by American design or Hollywood design. Um, getting, uh, getting roles that are, are strong alpha male uh, roles, like the one in, in Falling Skies when I played Dai, is uh, it's exhilarating, it's refreshing, it's um, confidence building. Unfortunately, I died in this second, second season uh, finale. But, uh, you know, that, 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 it's expected. Um, even, even that was a step in the right direction, you know. Spielberg is always the head of the curve. Lots of times the strong Asian uh, actors are cast as a, as a villain to somehow elevate the, the Caucasian hero who always wins. Um, or or you, you could be a good guy, you could be a strong character, but you're not going to live to the end. Now that's a pattern that has been, uh, you know, it's a consistent pattern that's been going on for a hundred years in Hollywood. Um, slowly that's changing, you know what I mean? It's supposed to be a factory for stories. Let's not keep rehashing the same story. I, I really believe that the audience is um, a lot more intelligent than uh, the industry gives them credit for. Um, I think that they're hungry, uh, starving for new original stories. We've seen the white guy win a million times, every time. You know, um, maybe you know, the biggest change would happen if the audience actually put in their two cents and, and demanded it. Uh, but then again, you know, we're highly conditioned for uh, what we're used to seeing. But, uh, you know, a as a fan of stories, I like to see twists. I like to see new things, you know. I don't want to see the same rehashed, uh, twice cooked, three times over story that, you know, Hollywood keeps doing um, with all these reboots. Uh, best stories are the original ones, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to push for that. Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a cultural thing. I think, you know, in many ways, the general perception of Asians that they are kind of uh, docile and uh, you know non-confrontational I think that's a little bit true um, and, and that being said you know getting to this point here and even doing an interview like this it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm putting a mass call out to, you know people like yourselves gentlemen like you who will help you know uh, perpetuate this change because you know one man can't do it alone or one two people that are fortunate enough to be working actors in Hollywood can't do it alone you need uh, you know you need a legion of people behind you so I'm trying to light a fire under all Asians asses we, we often get uh, labeled with the, the mine, uh, model minority I think uh, along with that comes the the reputation that you're just so proper non-confrontational I think in many ways that might be true amongst uh, you know the, the collective Asian community um, there's nothing wrong with it. There's no shame in standing up, uh, you know, for your rights, uh, your pride, your integrity, um, and certainly the way you're portrayed in Hollywood. And that's all I'm trying to do. I wish a lot more people would join, uh, the, you know, the cause. I think a lot more people are standing up, you know, and, uh, and, and falling in and, and, and doing their part. But uh, the more, uh, the more there are, the, the, the bigger difference that we'll make. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Daredevil is personally, uh, you know, it, it, it gratifying because I was a massive fan of Daredevil and having, you know, to, to the opportunity to play uh, a role and flesh out a role in, in, in a comic book uh, storyline that, you know, I've followed since I was a kid. It's huge. It's huge. It's massive. Like, if I could go back in time and uh, predict that this was going to happen, you know, I'd be doing cartwheels as a kid going, oh, I can't wait till these, you know, a certain amount of years passes by and I get to play this role. It's a huge privilege. It's massive uh, in the sense that, uh, you know, I, I could be there for days standing across from Daredevil dressed up, you know, and the cameras are going and, you know, I got to pinch myself. This is really happening. That's huge. And of course, it's going to open up, uh, you know, other doors. I just uh, like take each job and, and do the best I can and hope that, uh, you know, it, it, to uh, parlay into something better. But uh, yeah, I'm playing with the big boys right now. I just want to you know, keep doing consistent work and, uh, and, and, and hopefully more jobs will come. But um, every day, uh, I'm appreciative of, of, of uh, everything that I have and uh, everything that you know, I set out to achieve. 10 years, uh, you know, maybe I wouldn't want to be auditioning as much as I do. A lot of times you'll go in multiple times for, for certain uh, casting directors and I find that to be wasteful uh, it's kind of redundant since they have you on tape doing other performances um, I guess they need to know but uh, hopefully uh, I'll have uh, I'll be a little bit more selective with the projects that I get to do and maybe you know some of the higher end high profile projects will come to me directly instead of having to go through the whole uh, you know casting protocol um, maybe I would love to you know try my hand at producing and perhaps, uh, you know, write a little bit more, more material uh, for myself and other, you know, uh, guys like me. So I wouldn't have to bitch and complain so much because, you know, I've been accused of being a whiner, but I'm absolutely not. I'm actually quite an optimist and, you know, I, I, I've always put my money where my mouth is and, you know, I've taken action. Um, and I made it all the way here from French Canada. So, you know, I've always put in the effort to anybody that uh, detracts from me and accusing me of otherwise, I'd be like, you know, well, let's have a sit down, have a coffee or a beer, and let me explain it to you. But, uh, you know, I I'm trying, I'm trying hard, and uh, hopefully I'll have a little bit more freedom, a little more maneuverability in the industry. How, do I have any, uh, any, any um, advice? Yeah, don't fucking quit. Quitters never win, that's all it is. You know, if you, if you have a dream, you want to do it, just keep pursuing it, keep pursuing it. You know, a door closes, kick it open. Um, it's, 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 it's simple, you just don't take no for an answer. You keep going, the more perseverance that you have, the more uh, you know, potential you have for, for victory. All I know is like there's been you know, 10, 12 times that I want to throw in the towel in the last uh, you know, 20 years. You know, and uh, I hadn't. I thought uh, my number was up and nothing was ever going to happen. Mr. Spielberg cast me in that and a lot of things changed. Uh, overnight and um, that's about it you know a lot of things just got to align you got to have you know some fortune on your side and you got to get the right creatives to recognize what you can offer to to you know to sign on the dotted line and then give you a contract that's all it is most of the time you have a bunch of people working you know uh, off of their own whatever their intentions and uh, sometimes it'll work in your favor most of the time it'll work against you you know, but you always got to remember it. it's not you. Your intent and what you got to offer, only you know, purely, as, as an individual. Nobody else really knows. Um, it's your job to, to, um, to uh, embellish that to the world. Because nobody else is going to dig it out of you, you know. So you got to say, hey world, here I am. Take it or leave it. If you don't take it, then I'm still going to be here. And, you know, you just keep uh, forging on.